This is a uh, video response to the critical G. He asked if there are any economists out on the internet, and I know of one. It's me! I'm an economist out on the internet that had a question, uh, or to answer a question he had about inflation. And uh, it was kind of a multifaceted question, so I'll kind of uh, explain it directly to uh, the critical G. Uh, the, the first error, not error, mistake uh, that he made uh, in his video uh, was where he incorporated people into trying to understand how inflation worked. And uh, people do play a role in that they drive production, but take people out of it because that simply confuses and it really isn't applicable to understanding how inflation and, and uh, uh, goods are created. What really drives inflation, and I think he intuitively understood this, is you have a fixed amount of goods produced in an economy and there's a certain amount of money to buy those goods. And if you take out foreign countries, because I can't take dollars and buy stuff in Spain because I got pesos, so just look at your own country, within your country, within this controlled environment, uh, this controlled economy here, you have a certain amount of stuff that you can buy and there's a certain amount of money. Now what really drives the value or what really drives wealth, and this is where most people get confused about why you can't just print off more money, is to understand the true source of wealth is stuff. First thing I do in my economics class is I teach kids there is no such thing as money. There's only stuff. Money is a tool we use to trade our, stu our stuff and trade our time into uh, a tangible item that we can use and go and buy other stuff from other people. Uh, but without bringing in labor, uh, what, what really drives the value of an economy is the amount of stuff we produce. The toys, the video games, the Xboxes, the chairs, and everyone thinks it's got to be cool. It doesn't have to be cool. It could be sheetrock, whatever. Uh, it could be services, lawyer services, accounting services, back rubs, everything. That is what determines the wealth of a nation. So the more stuff we make, the wealthier we are. So there's nothing inherently valuable about the money itself, like the paper dollar or this you know, worthless cat or clad coins. Uh, uh, that, that has no value. So the fact that we can trade it in for stuff that gives us value and utility, that's what gives us value. Now, I demonstrated this in my class where I printed off this fake currency and, and we had a certain amount of Snickers bars. Um, and I, I had, that was the stuff, was the Snicker bars. And then what I would do is give everybody a certain amount of this fake money and I'd let them start trading. Um, and then what I would do is start flooding the market with higher and higher denominated bills. I just hyperinflate the economy. I think we got something like 2.5 million percent inflation within an hour. Well, the human psychology was like, look at the money. Oh, look at this. And they just keep trying to trade and make more and more money. When, you know, by the time the end of this experiment was done and over, I said, okay, who won? Well, What's sad is everyone thought it was whoever had the most amount of money. Well, what the reality was, was this quiet little shy girl, she had nearly all the candy. Uh, and she, I think she knew what she was doing. She was the truly wealthiest person there. She was the one who, who won the competition. So hopefully that kind of explains inflation. Uh, uh, it is not the no amount of money that's out there. Now the second question Critical G had was, well, okay, well, why do we have inflation? Why is the government pursuing inflation? There's always some inflation, maybe not hyperinflation, uh, but why do we have two to 3% inflation a year? In theory, you shouldn't. In theory, you would want to have price stability. And the reason for that is it allows you uh, not just to compare prices from one year to, a not to the next and, and just make things a lot easier in calculating salaries and stuff like that. Um, it's also very good for investment because if businesses and investors and entrepreneurs own prices are going to be stable, we can lock in at uh, certain prices, um, they're more prone to go ahead and invest. So that triggers economic growth. So price stability is very good and conducive to economic growth. But the reason why there always seems to be an installed or purposeful 2 to 3% inflation per year, that's where you get, I don't want to even call it conspiracy theories, but it's, uh, there are all ulterior motives and, and uh, not so honorable intentions going on there on the part of the government. First, uh, inflation over time will erode and eat away at the value of debt, government debt. So governments have an incentive, usually because governments have debt, to let inflation eat away at that. And since the United States has, government has such a, high credit rating in theory, uh, it can get by paying, you know, what, 2-3% maybe a year on uh, on its bonds and its treasuries. 
So uh, if inflation is 4% a year, essentially the government is getting free money. Uh, and and the, the value of the debt is being eroded with inflation. That's one incentive. Um, another reason, although this isn't nefarious, is that having a little bit of inflation prompts people to invest their money somewhere. You don't just hold it and leave it under a mattress because you say, well, it's, it's going to be, you know, 10 years from now, it'll be worth the exact same purchasing power. So you uh, invest it. How do you invest it? Well, you deposit it at a bank and you get your two or one and a half percent uh, interest. That gives banks uh, capital to go and lend out and lowers the cost of capital for businesses. Um, so you invest in your 401ks, your IRAs, your whatever retirement plans there happen to be in Australia. So that you, you just don't sit on it. That money is in the economy being invested um, somewhere. The other one, I have my notes here. Excuse me. Oh, again, this gets back to being nefarious. Uh, is increasing tax revenue. And the reason why is you, you have wealth taxes. A lot of people look at income taxes and that's what they focus on. But there are also wealth taxes, taxes on things you already own, primarily your house. So if there is inflation, the value of your house or your stocks, uh, any kind of asset, investment asset that you have, goes up in value. And then when you sell it, there's a larger capital gain. Not just because maybe the real value of that asset had gone up, but it has also been inflated with inflation. So you get to pay taxes on that capital gain plus the inflation. So hopefully that explained it and uh, we all had a very exciting lesson about inflation and stuff. And actually the truth is if you understand that the real value of an economy uh, and wealth is stuff, that will set you down the path to understanding a hell of a lot more about economics than your average economics teacher in college could ever do. So have a good one. We'll see ya.